Welcome to Learning is the New Working. Um, this is a special episode that we're sending out ahead of next week's excellent episode with Sheila Jagannathan from the World Bank. Really interesting conversation. But I wanted to say a few words to acknowledge the obvious. Our world's been turned upside down and inside out and completely disrupted, to use our own language, to say the least. Like all of you, I'm still processing the speed with which things have gone from a fun, incredibly furious and busy first two months of the year with lots of travel and work and plans for the rest of the year to an abrupt, dystopian, sobering and sometimes terrifying halt. We're all finding the situation changing by the hour and any frame of reference or template that I think I have to process what's going on quickly becomes inadequate in the face of new news and a new reality. The last 10 days for me and I'm sure for you has seen a torrent of cancellations, disappointments, business closings, and increasingly draconian social and physical constraints as we have, as a species attempt to confront an ancient enemy in a new and seemingly deadly form. We're all clear what needs to be done to pr protect ourselves, um, but it goes against our very nature. We need to isolate while the scientific and medical community establish the front lines and fight in the race to develop treatments and cures. They are brave people, as are the people keeping the internet going and all the other infrastructure, the food supply chain that we're going to need to get through this. At the same time, uh, it feels like in order to address this ex existential threat of the coronavirus and COVID-19 outbreak, we are going to have to bring the global economy to a near halt. This is an experiment that I don't think we've run before and has no real precedent, certainly not in my lifetime or recent history. These twin threats have propelled many of us with renewed force into a new world of work and a new way of living with a speed and force we couldn't have imagined just a few short weeks ago. We started this podcast with an investigation and a discussion with Lisa Solomon from Stanford University on the term VUCA. I learned it meant volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity, but I did not imagine the force and rapidity with which the forces of change would assail our world on a global scale. Our topics, the world of work, the world of school, the acts of teaching and learning in the workplace, just experienced an earthquake of unforeseen magnitude, and as yet, an unknown duration. On the flip side, and I am an optimist, I think we're all seeing stories of incredible courage, leadership, innovation, and collective support as people come together, even when socially distanced. The topics that have emerged through my conversations in the podcast seem very relevant today. The need to be agile and to question established routines, the importance of sponsoring curiosity and a learning culture to operate from knowledge, using what we have available to us in terms of technology to solve problems in the simplest, most creative ways, taking fact and science-based approaches to everything we do, running radical experiments quickly, learning out loud and sharing the results for community feedback, and focusing, of course, on our collective humanity. It seems inevitable that the practice of working from home, distance learning, digitally mediated commerce and collaboration, and even socializing will have a profound and long-lasting impact on the world of work, leadership, learning, and school. Here's some examples in just the last 10 days of what's happened in my small world. My wife is a school administrator for a K-8 through language immersion school here in the Seattle area. Within seven days, 400 children, their teachers and parents have pivoted to an entirely online model. So far, with good results, great humor, and a lot of learning. Many of my industry colleagues that I've reached out to over the last few days have done a lot to pivot as well. They've moved onboarding, training, and entire events online very, very quickly. At Redfin, a digital uh, real estate company here in Seattle, the team skilled up their faculty and moved onboarding and critical training online very, very quickly. And I'm sure there are many, many other stories just like that. There's a tsunami of work from home and lead from home, and collaborate from home trips on the internet, on LinkedIn and Facebook. The home workspace 
is the new Instagram staple as people share their hastily set up workstations and work environments under the stairs or in beautiful offices in their homes. In Seattle, we're holding a community town hall for learning professionals that we plan for months now. We've moved it from a physical space where we were capped to 50 people to online, and we have well over 120 people in the learning community in Seattle anxious to connect, share best practices, and learn from each other how to cope and how to face the future. One of my favorite stories is the young team at Arist. That's Arist, short for Aristotle. Michael Ioffi and the team that we interviewed in the podcast in December have paired up with the lovely people of Pyramid Consulting, John Cropper and Michael Culligan, friends of mine from Lingos and Humentum Days, and they've built a text-based course on COVID-19. As I speak, volunteers are translating it into many, many different languages, and that's something you might want to help with. Um, and it will be a critical resource in places where there's low bandwidth, getting information, detailed information, based on World Health Organization input to areas where there's low bandwidth. I'm sure you all have your stories of rapid transformation <laughs> and uh, quick pivots to a new world. I love the stories, and I encourage you to share them. The willingness to collaborate and innovate that's going on is extraordinary, which is great, because the current signs are that things will get worse before they improve. Already training providers who've only experimented in the past with online online delivery now find themselves almost 100% in the online space. Frankly, many of them will fail to generate the cash flow they need to survive and keep their staff employed. Many people will likely get laid off in our industry. Can we help reskill them or help them maintain their skill sets? What can tech vendors or online content vendors do to help homeschool children, teachers and the unemployed stay smart and prepare for what we know will come uh, in terms of recovery? As things got serious, I sort of asked myself whether the work on this podcast still makes sense. The podcast's almost a year old and just crossed 10,000 listens. We have about five or 600 people a week subscribing and listening, and the number's steadily grown, not exponentially, but steadily grown. The project was a labor of love for me and the team, part atonement for the lack of rigor and innovation I was able to do during my prior work life part a genuine attempt to learn from the approaches and experience of others and to share those learnings as broadly as I could. And in part, an effort to call people to action and join a conversation about how we help adults in the workplace in a rapidly changing world. The question I ask myself, does anyone really care? And is the effort worth it? And is listening worth your time? I've given this a lot of thought amongst the many other things I've been thinking about in the last 10 days, And I still don't really have an answer, but I do have a plan. We've been advocating for change. We've been asking leaders to disrupt themselves, to innovate, to become more scientific and to build new cultures of learning, to leverage technology, to love robots, and yet at the same time celebrate humanity and focus on the human work and work for social good. And I think those things are still relevant. We're about supporting and building community. These seem important things to do, even if we just take a slight sliver of people's time as we do it. In the short term, I have 10 or more episodes that I've already recorded but not published yet, including some amazing thinkers, practitioners and leaders from our industry, and I will continue to publish those on a bi-weekly basis to honour their time, their input and their contributions to our ongoing conversation. I'm also going to actively look for stories and practices of how we as a learning leader community are responding. And perhaps we'll thread in a new series of conversations on the issue of continuity and response to everything that's going on. It'll be helpful for me if you were to share stories and examples as you see them in the world. And I'm also open to suggestions uh, for other things that we could do. As always, I want to thank you, our listener. I want to thank our guests. I want to thank our sponsors. And I want to say that our hearts go out to the current and future victims of this terrible disease, our friends in China and Italy and Europe, uh, our friends 
who are amongst the most vulnerable in the community and to everybody who's suffering as a result. Please do your best to promote legitimate sources of accurate information. That is what we need right now. Be well, stay home if you can, and take care of each other. And if you have a little bit of time, why don't you listen in to the ongoing conversations at Learning is the New Working. Thanks.